Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss back again with another video and today we're going to do the real review of the HTC One M9. Now, I got to throw my usual disclaimer out there. When I call this the real review, I'm not trying to say that anybody else's review is fake. No. I call this the real review because I'm a real consumer. All of these phones that you see me review on my channel are phones that I buy with my own money. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. I don't work for any of these companies. So I don't have any reason to give y'all any biased information. All right, I'm going to keep it 100% real with y'all. So let's get right into this. Number one, the main question that everybody been asking me all week long is this. If I got an HTC One M8, should I upgrade and get an HTC One M9? And I got to be brutally honest with y'all. The answer to that question is no. All right, this is not worth the upgrade. And I'll tell you why. Shout out to HTC. They basically pulled the Apple move on us. All right, they hit us with the whip wop, the flim flam, the okie doke. Now you see me, now you don't. However you want to call it, HTC basically sold us the same phone twice. Now, Apple fans, y'all know what I'm talking about. Remember when you had your iPhone 5, then the iPhone 5S came out and you ran out and got it. And then about a week later, it hit you. Oh shit, I just bought the same phone twice. Well, I guarantee you, if you got an M8 and you upgrade to the M9, a couple of days are going to go past and you're going to have that same oh shit moment. You're going to realize I just bought the same phone twice. All right, now, for real hardcore tech lovers and tech heads like me, any upgrade is an upgrade, so I'm going to get the next phone. But to the average person, this is definitely not worth buying a new phone for $700 if you already got an M8. Definitely not worth it. Now, as usual with all of my reviews, I like to talk about everything I don't like first, and then we'll get into everything that I do like. All right, so let's start off with everything that I don't like. Number one, now some of the stuff I don't like has to do with hardware, some has to do with software, and some is just me nitpicking. All right, and when I start nitpicking, I give y'all a valid explanation of why, why I'm nitpicking like that. First up, no removable battery. Now, is that the biggest deal in the world? Of course not. A lot of phones don't have removable batteries like the iPhone, like the Nexus 6. A lot of phones that are still, you know, top of the food chain, they don't have a removable battery. But that's something that, depending on how you use your phone, that could be important to you. Now, for me, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but I am the type of dude that I like to have two or three extra spare batteries charged up in my pocket. So this way I could just rock out all day on official beast mode. That means using the phone from morning to night non-stop brightness level on max getting all my emails and alerts you know everything running the phone as hard as i can so no removable battery means you're gonna have to walk around with a charger or portable battery charger all right not a deal breaker but this is just something i don't like and keep in mind fellas and ladies the whole point of me making this video is just to help you in your purchase of your next phone okay so whatever i say don't take my word as law stuff i don't like you might like and stuff i like you might not like my advice to you is watch this video, then go out and watch another 10 videos and do the math yourself, and that should help you uh, in your next purchase. All right, so let's get back to the don't likes, all right? So we already covered the battery. Next, the camera. All right, now this, the camera on this phone is not the worst. All right, it's definitely not the worst, but the camera on this phone, especially at nighttime, is just not up to par with everything else that's on the market right now. Not the worst camera, definitely not, but when you're taking pictures at night in low light situations, and I'll give you an idea. And matter of fact, I'll show you a picture real quick. Why not? Now, I just, I just left the diner a few minutes ago. Let me pull up this picture. Let me show you a picture that I just took. And I'll show you the same picture that I took with the, uh, with the Galaxy S6. All right, talk amongst yourself for a second, fellas. Let me just pull this up. Pull it out my Galaxy S6. Let me go to photos real quick. Okay, now let me show you. Here's a picture I took at the flagship diner. Now, now this is video to video, so you might not see the big difference. But this is that picture at flagship diner. This is with the M9 at nighttime. And this is the picture with the Galaxy S6. Okay, so now, if you can see both of them, if you notice, with the Galaxy S6, you can see the bricks on the diner. Everything is a lot more clear. And with the M9, it's a lot more dark and dull. You're getting a lot more glare from the lights. The camera on this, at, when you're taking pictures at night, when you're taking pictures at night, it's just not up to par. All right? It's not up to par with phones like the, the S6 and the G3 and the Nexus and the iPhone. You got a lot of choices on the market. Keep in mind, $700 off contract. The best thing you want to do is get the most bang for your buck. 
Now, it all depends on how you're using your phone. If you're not a big camera person, that might not be a big deal for you. But to most people that's buying camera phones and smartphones, you plan on taking some pictures and you want to be prepared, especially at nighttime. That's when the majority of the real action is going down at night. So you want to have a camera that's going to be able to take decent pictures at night. And this ain't it. Now, look, I know you could play with the uh, HDR and you could play with all the manual settings. Shout out to my man Zito Max. He just did a video showing you how to fix that autofocus bug because that's another problem with this. When you hit autofocus on the camera, especially at night, even in the daytime, when you hit autofocus, it changes the lighting of the picture. So if you're taking a picture of something that's right in front of you, as soon as you hit that autofocus, everything gets dark. All right, and that's that's kind of a big problem for me. That's you know that's one of the main things I don't like about this phone. But there's a way around that if you use HDR. There's a way around that if you play with all the white balance and the aperture and the shutter speed and play with all those settings. But for your average person that that's not a photographer and doesn't know what all that stuff is, you just want to point and shoot camera. This one is not the best at nighttime. Next, no wireless charging. Okay, now. Here, we, here I go nitpicking, but you got to remember, $700, no wireless charging built into the phone, and you got other phones for the same price that have wireless charging built in. Now, I know what you're saying, okay, I don't really use that and all that, not, not a big deal. Yeah, but now take for me, this is one of my favorite battery chargers, okay, the Qistone. This is a wireless battery charger. I can just take my S6, drop it right on here, and start charging up the phone. Okay, so now this is this could be in my pocket. No wires, no cables, nothing. Y'all see my video for the tilt view? That's one of my favorite car chargers now. Same thing, wireless charging in the car. So wireless charging, yeah, that's a big feature for me. Now, it's not on the HTC One M9, okay? Not a big deal to some people, but to me, like I said, just keep that in mind when you're going out to buy your next phone. You Do you want to have the features that everybody else has or a lot of people have, or do you want to just settle? All right, now, I'm all about having options and features. There's no reason for you to settle. If that's something that you think will be interesting and fly for you to have, a wireless charger, then you want to get a phone that has wireless charging capabilities. Now, I know you could get power cards and all of that, but that will require you to use a case. And some people, especially if you got an M9 with a beautiful build like this, you don't want to use a case. So, no wireless charging built into the phone. Next, another nitpick right here. No fingerprint scanner. Now, HTC is not known for having fingerprint scanners. Y'all remember... If y'all watch my video for the HTC One Max, that was probably the worst attempt at a fingerprint scanner in the history of attempts. Yeah, that, that was a fail. So maybe they just said, okay, we'll just leave it alone, whatever. But you got to remember, other phones, Galaxy S6, iPhone, other phones have fingerprint scanners. So now the question is, when you're going to buy your phone, do you want that feature? Now... For you, it might not be a big deal, but for me, having a fingerprint scanner is important, especially after you start using it, you'll realize that you can't not use it, All right? If you went from a phone with a fingerprint scanner, you're not going to want to go back to putting in passcodes and putting in swipe codes and all that. Fellas, let me talk to the fellas real quick. You know, when you get home from work, you know, you got your lady, your girl, whatever. She don't want to see your phone always locked. When you have a fingerprint scan on, your phone is always locked, but that's because, you, you, you know, you just tell her you want to use that cool fingerprint feature. All right, tech heads and everybody who's in the tech game, you want to have the most features available for your phone, okay? So now if you go in the store with $700, why would you want to get a phone that doesn't have fingerprint scanner as opposed to one that does? Okay, so this is just stuff that I'm throwing out there because you so you can weigh the pros and the cons and make the decision yourself. Next, now like I said, I'm nitpicking. No fast charge included. Now, the phone is fast charge capable. Right? You could buy it from HCC's website. They sell the uh, Qualcomm, the 2.0 fast charger. It's about 35 bucks. But my thing is, if I just drop $700 on the phone and the phone is fast charge ready, why not give me the charger? Keep the free headphones. I right? keep the headphones. Give me the charger. Now I know what y'all gonna say. You could just go on Amazon and buy something like this. I'll pop this open during the week and show y'all what this is. This is just another aftermarket fast charger, 15 bucks. You could go do that and save a couple of dollars. But the whole point is, when you spend $700, you want to just plug and play. You want to open up the phone, activate it, and you out the door. You don't want to have to immediately start shopping for, you know, aftermarket or stock accessories. Now that's just another bill. All right, so I wish they, they would have gave us the charger, you know, included with the phone. Why not? Samsung did. Motorola did. You know, why not? So that's just one thing I'm not really feeling. HTC, when you go back to the drawing board, 
you know, stop trying to make people spend extra money. All right, we already spent extra money buying the same phone twice. The last thing, you know, the least thing you could do is give us the free fast charge included. Next, the size of the phone. Now, this is up for debate, and like I said, this is going to be your choice. Me personally, five inch phones are just a little bit too small for my personal needs. Now, I like to use my phone to do all of my personal stuff and my business stuff. And a lot of my business stuff requires me to use spreadsheets. And when you got a five inch phone, everybody knows it's hard to look at a spreadsheet. You're going to have to put it in landscape mode and you're still going to be doing a lot of pinching and a lot of zooming. All right. So if you're looking for a heavy hitting business phone, then this is something, you know, that you got to consider the size. All right. So that's why I, I, I tend to use my note and my Nexus really the heaviest for all my business needs. And especially not, not even only business, but let's look at uh, social media. Nowadays, when you look at a Facebook post, nobody just leaves, uh, you know, one one sentence comments anymore. Everybody's writing these novels un under the comments. And a lot of times when you bored, you you read those novels and, you know, you're going to do a lot of scrolling up and down. When you got a bigger phone, you get to see more of what's going on. All right. So size, like I said, that's just my personal opinion. It's a little bit too small for me. If you're a big dude and you got big fingers. Yeah, you're going to notice that it's, it's a little bit too small for you. But if you're looking for a 5-inch phone, then the size is right on par. Next, the power button on the side. Okay, now, this is another thing. I would have been more happy with HCC if they sold me the same phone twice, but leave everything exactly the way it was. Sell me the same phone twice like, like Apple did with the 5 and the 5 and the 5S. At least I was able to use the same accessories that I had with that phone already. Now, you get an M8. You got all your cases, all your accessories, you get an M9, none of those cases fit because they, they changed the power button. And not only did they change it to the side, but then now you got the volume buttons right there. Okay, now I see, now I look closely, the, the volume buttons and the power button have a different texture. The, the power button is more textured, has like some ridges on it, you could feel it, but 9 times out of 10, you're going to end up pressing the wrong button. You're going to press the volume down button when you go to press power button. And, and, and I've been using this for a week straight, and I've still been having that same problem playing around with the power button and the, and the volume buttons. It's annoying. All right, I wish they would have left it on the top. This phone is only 5 inches. It's not like you need to have it on the side because you got a big phone. The average person can't reach the top of the phone while holding it with one hand. You could reach this phone easily. The average person could easily reach the top of the phone. So they should have left that right there. Next, no physical home button. Now, I know, here we go, I'm nitpicking. But I like having a physical home button. If you came from using an iPhone, you love that home button. If you came from using a Galaxy phone, you love having that physical home button. Because a lot of times when you're watching videos or something, you know, you have to swipe up to get your on-screen keys and then press the home button. So I like to have a physical home button. Is that a big deal? Not really. I right, just nitpicking, just throwing every possible thing that I don't like out there in the air for y'all. And last but not least, the thing I don't like about this phone the most is HTC basically sold me the same phone twice. All right, that's the, there's no real upgrades enough to make you get that wow factor like, okay, I just bought a new phone. Now, what I like to do, all right, now this is just me rambling for a minute. What I like to do when I want to get that new phone feeling. And I, I, I advise y'all to try this sometimes. If you got a phone and you've been using the same phone for about a month and you want to get a new phone feeling, that's why I suggest buying different cases. Every case is going to give your phone a different feel. So if you put a rubber case on, it's going to feel different. If you put a metal case, it's going to feel different. If you put a plastic case, it's going to feel different. So you, get, you use cases to give you that different phone feel. Or what you do is you root your phone and you drop a different ROM on it. All right, then you customize the icons, you customize everything. You're constantly having that new phone feel. But when you buy your HTC M9, and if you're not into rooting and ROMing and all of that, you're, gonna not, you're not going to have that new phone feel. It's going to pretty much feel like you got the same phone again. Now, is that a big deal? No, because it is still some, you know, somewhat of an upgrade. But when I'm spending $700, I want to go from one phone to something completely different. I want to feel like I just got my money's worth. I bought a brand new phone with new features and new this, new that. Not just little theme features, you know, little stuff that I could download from somewhere else and have that same effect. All right, so that's one ma major flaw to this phone is it's too similar to the M8. Now, if you got an M7, yeah, this is a major upgrade for you. All right, if you got an M7, this is a major upgrade for you. If you're coming from BlackBerry or Apple, this is a major upgrade for you. All right, but I'm just speaking right now to M8 owners. All right, that's the number one question I got last week. Should you go put your phone on Craigslist and sell it for $350? Don't do that. You're taking a loss. 
Now, I got lucky because my daughter happened to lose her S5 and she wants the M8. So I'm going to just give her this one. That's why I'm going to end up keeping this one. Otherwise, this would have been back in the box, back to Sprint. Now, with all that being said, I know it sounds like I'm bashing, but let's talk about what I do like. Now, there's a lot of stuff about this phone that I do like too. First up, the build quality. All right, now, in my personal opinion, out of all the phones that I use, this is the second best built phone that I got right now. Now, I got to give the best build quality to the S6. The S6 right now is just killing everything on the market. All of the cats that really love the, you know, the love the glass back on the iPhone 4, you remember how that felt in your hand? Just give you that premium feel when you got metal and glass together. You get the same thing on your S6. Now, if you had an S5 and you bought an S6, look at the phone. This is it's clearly an upgrade. You could just look at it and see. Now, catch that, catch that really into tech game. From the back of these phones, you could automatically tell which one is which because no more little camera on the top. So, you know, to a real tech head, you won't have to look hard to tell which one is which. But to the average person, these two, these two basically look like the same phone. If you got it now, I don't want to turn this into a comparison video, but some things you have to compare in order to get the full effect of what I'm saying. If you had an S5 and you got an S6, you now you know what I'm talking about. You got a brand new phone. This is something totally different. New features, new fingerprint scanner. You know, a lot of stuff has changed. And with the M8, it hasn't. But with that being said, this is my second favorite built phone. Okay, you can't, nobody can argue that this phone looks, you know, doesn't look beautiful. All right, with the gold trim. Now, I got the gold and silver version. The aluminum unibody, even though it's not 100% unibody, but it's more metal than not. All right, so you're getting that metal premium feel. You know, if you're not using the case, this phone feels great to hold in the hand. It's a little bit sharper. All right, it's a little bit sharper as opposed to the M8. But it still feels great in the hand. So the build quality on this is a definite go. Next, let's talk about the display. So now all of these phones coming out now with uh, 4K, you know, quad HD displays, which don't really matter to the naked eye. You can't see them. You know, you can't see the difference. So HTC still got the same 1080p LCD display and it looks beautiful. It looks just as good as the M8. It looks great. Now, personally, I like Super AMOLED's, you know, displays a lot better especially you know with the black backgrounds it looks a lot better but this one is nice and bright and colorful and vivid hits you in the face you're not going to have a problem with this display okay so don't worry about it's not for you know uh, it's not quad hd display look at you know perfect example of why i don't like talking about specs yeah i know i hate talking about specs but look at your lg g3 all right when that phone came out everybody made a big deal about the display but to the average person, when you put the, the LG right next to a Galaxy phone, the average person says the Galaxy phone looks better. You know, you got an S5. The, uh, the average person, when you put the brightness up, they're going to say the, the Galaxy phone looks more vivid and more colorful. The colors pop out at you more. It just looks better. All right, so don't, don't, don't get too, you know, wrapped up with all the specs. This display is beautiful. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. Next, the speakers on the front. Now, I've said this before, and i say it again. Speakers on the front is the best possible place to put speakers on the phone. Okay, that's that's where you want them. All right, when you're watching videos and you you know watching you know movies or playing games, whatever you're doing, you're looking at the phone. So why not have the speakers facing you? Now, speak on the back of the phone is the worst possible place. Speak on the bottom, not bad, but speak on the on the front and dual speakers on the front. That's an automatic win right there. All right, now that's part of the reason why I love the uh, the Google Nexus so much. Same thing. Now, I've heard people debating back and forth over and over which one is louder, which the loudest phone on the market right now. And I got to say that the Nexus 6 is the loudest phone that I have. If you put the Google Nexus 6 and you put the M9 together side by side on the table and you play music, the music on the Nexus 6 is louder. Now, the HTC has a better sound to it. All right, if you follow me, a better sound quality. If you're playing music with your HTC One, your M9, you're going to hear more of the bass, you're going to hear more of the treble, you hear all the instruments, it sounds better, but it's not as loud as the Nexus 6. So sometimes you want louder over sounding better, especially when it comes to ringtones. All of y'all dudes, ladies too, that work outside, that's important to you. You got the phone in your pocket or your, you know, your vest pocket or whatever you're doing, and you know, you're not going to feel that vibration you outside doing actual work. You want to hear that ringtone going off as loud as possible so you don't miss any important phone calls or any important emails, whatever you got going on. All right, so the speakers on the front, they sound great. 
HTC Boom Sound. All right, that's the next thing I like, HTC Boom Sound. Boom Sound works once you plug your headphones in. Now, I know a lot of your hardcore Android cats, y'all got Power Amp, y'all got Volume Plus, y'all got a whole bunch of, you know, aftermarket apps to make your music sound better. But just, you know, bringing this out the box stock, HTC Boom Sound sounds great. Plug your headphones in, activate Boom Sound, and you're gonna see um, you're gonna see a difference. Well, you're gonna hear a difference. Let me show you what that is right now. Okay, so you got you got two modes. You got theater mode and music mode. So I I, I found in my testing that music mode works better for music, and I play it in theater mo mode when I'm uh, playing YouTube videos. And I'm watching all these videos on Facebook, people getting beat down and all that. I watch those on theater mode, and you'll notice you hear sound from the top speaker and some sound from the bottom. It almost sounds like, you know, Dolby, real Dolby surround sound. All right, so it mixes up between the two speakers. That's a plus right there. All right, definitely feeling that. Next, the camera. Now, the camera on this, y'all heard me say I don't like taking the pictures at night and all that. But other than that, the camera on this, this is probably one of the most fun cameras that you could get. When you go to your camera settings, you're going to notice that you got a lot of different settings to play with. Okay, you got all of these different settings to play with. Once you take a picture, you could do all of these effects and all that. And now look, this is not a how-to video. This is not a tutorial. So I'm not going to show you everything. I'm basically just going to tell you. You play with it for yourself. Take my word. But um, this is a lot of fun. All right, I'm not going to get into that real quick. But I will show you one thing I did make. Let me just go to... um. Let me go to my gallery. Let me let me show you what Zoe is. Now we talked about HTC Zoe before. Zoe is a lot of fun. Okay, what Zoe does is real simple. Let me just pull it up. Real simple. Now say you go out. Now I've been taking a bunch of pictures. Say you go out with your girl, you go with your boyfriend, your kids, whatever you do, and you go on a little adventure. You go to Coney, Coney Island, Great Adventures, wherever you're going. You start taking pictures from as soon as you're in the house getting dressed. You get out in the car, you get out online, you do all your stuff, you go to lunch, go to dinner, you come home. You have all your pictures. So now all you got to do is you click on a picture. Let's say like this one. Let's click on Zoe. You click on Zoe. Now it's going to load that up, that picture in. All of the other pictures, I'll make one real quick. Let's just make a quick, Zo a quick Zoe. I'll just, let me just find, make sure I got some uh, appropriate pictures. <laughs> Alright, now look, I just took a couple of pictures. Made him into a Zoe. It'll add all these effects for you. You can change the music, do whatever you want to do. Turns into like a mini movie. You can do pictures and videos. All right? Turns into like a mini movie. You can email that to your friend. Save it for yourself. Do whatever you want. But the point I'm trying to make is this camera is a lot of fun. Okay, you're going to have fun playing with the effects. You're going to have a lot of fun playing with Zoe. But the only problem is... Don't take too many pictures at night. I, if you're outside of a night owl vampire life, then you're not going to like taking the pictures with this at night. But other than that, in the daytime, pictures come out beautiful. If there's, a, if there's the right amount of light, pictures come out beautiful. Now, that goes back to what I was saying earlier. It all depends on what you're buying your phone for. Okay, now, if you got kids and you got graduations, you got family members going to weddings and, and bar mitzvahs and all of that, whatever you're doing... I recommend getting a real camera right? because, you know, you don't want to be taking pictures at a wedding with a camera. You know, these are pictures that you want to keep forever. Why not get a real camera and take your pictures with that? This camera works perfectly for what it's designed for. Right? It's, it's, it's designed for being a camera attached to a cell phone. Right? It's not, a, it's not a, a camera with a phone attached to it. It's supposed to be a phone that happens to have a camera. Now, we know all of these new phones coming out, yeah, the cameras are, you know, excellent. They're almost up there with regular cameras, but it's still not a regular DLSR camera, all right? This, these are just regular point-and-shoot cameras made for day-to-day -day outside activities. It's the same thing, like, if you want to get a portable video game. A lot of people ask me why I don't play video games, you know, play games on my phone too much, because it's not the same experience. If I want to have a real video game experience while I'm on the go, I pull out my Game Boy, I pull out my PS Vita, I pull out something like that, something that was designed for that use. This was not designed specifically around the camera. But the camera works perfectly if you're just taking that picture of that cheeseburger you have for lunch and slapping it on Instagram. It's going to come out perfect. If you're in the bathroom, ladies, and you're sitting on the sink taking that uh, selfie for the gram, it's going to come out perfect. All right? The front-facing camera works perfectly in, in, in the light, low light, same issue. 
but the rear facing camera is perfect for all of these shots in the gym it's perfect for all your new sneakers that you just got it's perfect for after you just come out the car wash and you want to post a picture of the whip looking nice and clean on instagram this camera serves its purpose all right so don't 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 get discouraged about the low light photos and all of that this camera serves its purpose all right next let's talk about the motion gestures. Now, this is one of my favorite parts about this phone, and this kind of makes up for not having the home button, the motion gestures. All right, so let's let's go through some of the motion gestures real quick. Now, if you got the phone in your, you got, not motion gestures mean you have to motion it first. So you pick the phone up, you double tap, and it turns the screen on. Okay, that's a nice motion right there. You pick the phone up, you swipe up. It'll take you to your last use screen, okay? You pick the phone up, you swipe down. See, I gotta do actual motion. You swipe down. Did I even activate this? Let me just make sure I got it activated. That's another thing that I got. Uh, you can actually set the motions. Uh, you could change the motions. All right, I probably deactivated that one. I was supposed to activate it for the video, but if you swipe down, it'll take you to voice command. And the reason that I deactivated voice command is because same thing like I said with the M8 video. Voice command on this sucks. All right, it really sucks. I never use it. All right, and that, at least now HTC gave you the option when you go to settings, you could turn off certain motions. So the main two motions that I leave on is the double tap to open the screen and the swipe up to take me to my last screen. And that's perfect for when you're in the house, you're watching TV and you're chilling on Instagram. All right, shout out to everybody on the gram. You're chilling on Instagram, watching your favorite show. The commercial break comes on. You want to you pick up the phone. You go right back to the gram, right back to the pictures. OK, let me just go through. I like that. Y'all see, I like everybody's pictures. I'm liking pictures. My show comes back on, turn the phone off, put it down. As soon as commercial break, swipe up and right back to where I left off at. Now, you have other gestures too. You swipe one side, it'll take you straight to blink feed. Another gesture, you swipe to the other side and it'll, it'll just uh, open up to your home screen. Let's do that again. You pick it up, you swipe and it'll open up to your home screen. All right, so now normally I deactivate those two because I'm never really swiping to go straight to blink feed and I never really need to swipe to go straight to my home screen. I like to just go to whatever I was doing last. Okay, so motion gestures on this, they work 100% of the time. No problems with that. I'm definitely feeling that. And I'm definitely feeling that little bonus upgrade of giving you the actual option to turn off certain motions. Okay, so now you're not just stuck having all the motions. A lot of times, sometimes um, they'll open up in your pocket. You know, you you push your hand in your pocket to reach for your chapstick and you end up opening up the phone and you hear that little click sound and you're taking pictures in your pocket. All right. So that's the, the motion gestures. That's a win right there. Next battery. All right, let's talk about battery life real quick. Now, not the best battery in the world, but definitely not the worst. Now, heavy usage. And for me, my heavy usage might be a little bit different than y'all's. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram all day long. I'm on YouTube all day long. I'm on Google Plus. I'm everywhere all day long and I'm outside a lot of the time. So I got to have my brightness up higher than your average person's brightness. So my heavy use is a little bit heavier than a lot of people's. I got six email accounts built in. So I'm getting a lot of push emails, a lot of refreshing, a lot of GPS going on. I'm only getting four to five hours of heavy use. All right, four to five hours of heavy use with moderate use. You're not going to have a problem going all day long. And I'm talking about without even touching power saving mode at all i never touch that mode because when you activate power saving mode it deactivates a lot of other stuff and i don't like that i like to run my phone at max all right you pay 700 dollars for the phone i'm running it at max all right full throttle okay so the battery on this is pretty good all right, it's pretty good not the best but it's pretty good now if you got a battery charger you're not gonna have a problem getting through the day but on average on an average day eight hour shift you're playing with your phone here and there. You know, you're not at work all day on the phone. You're not going to have a problem. All right, so battery life is pretty good. Next, let's talk about HTC Blink Feed. Now, Blink Feed is kind of like Flipboard, kind of like Samsung Briefing. It's the same thing. Only difference between the M9 and the M8 Blink Feed is that they finally fixed it where now it doesn't take forever to refresh. Remember before, see now it just refreshed. It still takes a couple of seconds, but before it used to take a long time to refresh, and that kind of turned me off to using it all together and I started using Flipboard or I started just going through, you know, each individual app. So now Blink Feed actually works and you could also turn it off. All right, you could you could get rid of Blink Feed altogether if you don't like it. But me personally, I like it. I use it. Now, that brings me to the next theme. <laughs> the next theme. Next thing, which is themes. All right, the next thing, which is themes. <laughs> 
<laughs> Say that twice. All right, next thing, which is themes. HTC finally has more customizable themes. Let's go to themes real quick. Now, when you go to your personalization, you have way more options with the themes. Okay, now I made my own theme, but you have a lot of themes from the catalog, and you're also able to edit your themes. All right, so now it's not just changing the color. If you notice, the top of my phone is red and all that. You can change that to whatever you want. All right, all these different themes to play with. You change the icons, change the dial, your, your, your phone call, your dollar, you know, the dial keypad. You change the colors of that. They got a whole bunch of themed icon packs. And one of the fun things about it is it'll, it'll create a theme for you. So what I did was, let's go back real quick. What I did was I just took a picture and I asked it to make a theme for me. And this is what it did. So this is the theme that it made for me. So there goes my home screen. My blink feed was supposed to be black. Shows you the app drawer. It's going to show you what the dollar looks like. That's your messages. It shows you basically what that theme is going to be, but it created it for me. Now, once they created it for me, I wasn't 100% satisfied with that. So now you go to this. Now you go to change the accent colors. So you see I got it on red. Let's click black. Now you see the top of the phone is black. Now the top of the phone is green. And this will change not only the top of the phone, but it'll change your dollar. It'll change your keypad. It'll change a lot of stuff up. I personally went with the red, and I like it. Whatever color you go with, that's going to be the color of your blink feed. Uh, your blink feed and all your app and this is different icons these are themed icons all of that is cool because these are stock features so nothing extra to go and download you don't have to worry about rooting your phone and dropping a different rom you don't have to go worry about you know downloading all these themed icon packs just one less thing to do all right so hcc themes a lot of fun next let's talk about multitasking all right now this phone Definitely has multitasking features, but it's not as, you know, not as good as with the uh, S6 and with the Note Edge where you're getting split screen multitasking. No, you get this. All right, so you're using the app. Say I'm on Twitter. I hit the Twitter, hit this, hit the button in the back again, and then I go back to the weather. Do some stuff with the weather, hit this back, go back to settings. So this is multitasking. Now, the good thing about this view right here also is now you can actually change this. All right, so now I could do, I could do the uh, card view. And have it like stock Android. All right, now, the only thing I don't like about the card view is there's no way to get rid of all of the cards at once. So I like to leave it on on the uh, grid view. So anytime during the day, I just hit the button and clear out all of my recently used apps. Okay, so that's that's a hot little feature right there. Multitasking is hot on this. <laughs> Not the best, though. All right, if you're a multitasking beast and you want to be doing stuff, you know, two sets at the same time, you know, two sets of emails open at the same time and visually looking at both of them at the same time, then you're going to have to go out and get a Galaxy phone or get a, a G3, something that has split screen capabilities. Now, I find myself when I'm using my HTC, a lot of times I have this phone in this hand, I have another phone in this hand, and I'll be cross-referencing. This way I don't have to keep pressing that button going back and forth. But, you know, sometimes you don't want to be that dude looking like a douchebag outside with two phones in your hand doing stuff. You know, you, sometimes you don't you don't want that look. Personally, I don't care, but sometimes you don't want that look. So you want the split screen, not on the HTC. All right, but multitasking is good. It works. Next, the IR Blaster. That's an important feature right there. IR Blaster on the top. You come home from work. You don't have to look for the remote control, fellas. If you have a fight with your girl over the TV, she watching Oprah, you want to check and see who won the game and all that. And she hot, she hiding the remote or holding the remote mad close. She don't want to you know, let go of that remote. You know, she even take the remote to the bathroom with her. Y'all, you know, people, y'all understand what I'm talking about. Remote control wars, they, they go down. All right. Would well, you got yourself a phone with IR blaster, set it up to your cable box and all of that. This way, now when you come in the house, you have that option to just use your phone to control your cable box, control your TV, control your media player, whatever you got that's compatible, you can control it with the HTC IR Blaster. So right now, I think all phones, that's that should be a mandatory feature, especially now that everything is wireless, everything is infrared, everything is you know compatible. Drop that feature on every phone. All right? IR Blaster, that's a great feature. Next, let's talk about real quick, the HTC Sense Home widget. Now, I don't really got much to say about that. I don't like it. I don't I don't like it. I should have put that at the beginning with stuff I don't like. I don't like it because it's not accurate. All right. Now, what that is, it's a home widget. I actually de deactivated it. 
it's a home widget. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to use your GPS location. So say when you go to work, it's supposed to put apps that's more you know recommended for work life, places to eat that's close to your job and all that. Then when you get home, it'll put on different apps that's your music player and YouTube and all that other stuff. You know, whatever. It, it, it's supposed to use. You know, it's uh, it's brain, if you want to call it that. It's supposed to use its its uh, internal organs. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going straight, man. This is a live video. It's supposed to figure that stuff out on its own. But what happens is it doesn't do that. Right? It doesn't work like that. When I get to work, it thinks that I'm at home. When I'm at home, it thinks that I'm at work. I now I don't know if that's good or bad. That means I'm I'm making money everywhere. I don't know if that's a good sign. If that's what they try to tell me, but I don't like how it works, so I don't use it. I can't really recommend that. I just leave that alone. All right. Now, internet speeds. That's all going to depend on. You know, we can't really we can't really talk about that too much because it depends on the service provider you have. Whether you have Verizon, AT and T, or Sprint, or T Mobile. A lot of people say, "Oh, I don't want to get the HTC One M9 because it's slow." No, it's slow because maybe T Mobile in that area is slow. You know, I live in New York City where we have Sprint Spark, and I'm not going to lie, my Sprint Spark gives me a lot of speeds. Sometimes that's faster than my iPhone, which is on Verizon. All right, so I pull out my iPhone. I go to load up a web page. I'm in a bad area. It's not loading up too fast. I pull out my Sprint phone, and it pops right up. And sometimes when I'm in certain areas, especially in Manhattan, it almost feels like I'm connected to Wi-Fi. It's unbelievable. So Sprint Spark, hopefully, I don't know where y'all live at, but hopefully if you're on Sprint, Sprint Spark comes to your neighborhood, you're going to love it. So if you got Sprint, don't throw away Sprint just yet. Find out when Spark is coming around your neighborhood. I'm locked into Sprint. I can't get rid of Sprint. I got a grandfather contract. I got unlimited internet, so I'll be with Sprint forever. All right? <laughs> I do got Verizon, too, but um, I I'm locked in with them also. That's why you only see Verizon and Sprint phones on my channel. So internet speeds, uh, that's user's choice. That depends on where you live at. Next, call quality. Same thing, I never had any problems with the call quality, never had any drop calls. Call quality is a go, sounds great. Now, one thing I want to touch on, a lot of people have been asking me, have I had that overheating problem yet? And the answer is no, and I use the phone from morning to night. Or one day, matter of fact, I think that was on Thursday, matter of fact, Wednesday. I used the phone from right off the charge, 100% to 10% straight on YouTube, I watching these uh, Mortal Kombat X videos and watching all this stuff. I killed the whole day basically on the phone. I even recharged the phone and did it again. The phone will heat up a little bit because it has a metal body. So you gotta expect it to heat up a little bit, but it never overheat. And I never had that, that message that I had on my G3 one day when I did the same thing where the G3 actually shut itself down. Like, no, you can't use me right now. I gotta cool down. My iPhone actually did that before too. So I never had that problem with this just yet, but when you're holding the phone in your hand, you will feel it heating up a little bit, but I recommend just putting the case on it and you won't have that problem. Use the phone all day long. Now we're getting into the heavy, heavy stuff right here. One of the main, the most important things that turns me on or off about a phone is the lag factor. All right, let's talk about the lag factor on this phone real quick. Now, on a scale of one to 10, I'm gonna hit y'all with a real number this time. On a scale of one to 10, one being no lag at all, and 10 being so much lag that it kind of reminds you of those old HTC Windows phones that was almost unusable, that you basically turning them off and turn them back on 10 times a day. You know, you get froze with the phone, you want to throw it and break it. 10 being that much lag. On the scale of 1 to 10, this phone I'm giving it a 1. All right, no lag. And that that right there is, is what's going to separate the HTC M9 from the S6. Now, I'm not going to talk about lag on the S6 yet. Because I haven't had any yet. Just got the phone. Just started using it. Haven't had that problem yet. But with my Galaxy Note, my Galaxy Note Edge, I get lag here and there. Okay, I get lag on my G3. My uh, iPhones, every now and then, you get occasional hiccups. My Nexus 6, all right, my heavy hitter Nexus 6 that I thought had no lag, the more apps I put on it, the more you know harder I use the phone. Occasionally, it does freeze up a little bit. Just a, a minor freeze. Occasionally, when you hit that home button, Say you're on Facebook and you hit that home button, the screen will be black and then it'll take a second for the apps to populate the screen. Now, I know that's nothing, not even not even two seconds, but I hate that kind of stuff. I hate lag. I, that's the number one thing I hate on the phone is lag. And with the HTC M9, I'm proud to say that no lag at all. And I've tried. Y'all see my Galaxy Note 4 video. 
look, I'm not, I'm not trying to sell y'all a phone. I'm not trying to make a video and make it look like the phone is perfect. I'm trying to find stuff that's wrong with the phone. I'm trying to download a whole bunch of apps. I'm trying to leave everything open in the background. I'm trying to force the phone to lag. I couldn't get this one to lag. Only thing I could do was get it to slow down. And that's when I first got the phone and I went to the Android market. I went to all my apps and I clicked on 99 apps and I started downloading 99 apps. Then I went to the phone and started doing other stuff. And then it was a little bit slower. But even still, what it wasn't that bad. Now that I got all of my apps running on here, I got, y'all know I don't like to close stuff in the background. I like to leave everything open. I like to hit my recent apps button and have, you know, pages and pages of stuff open. I don't care. No lag at all. Okay, so HTC is winning in the no lag department, and that alone might be your reason to buy this phone. That alone is enough reason for you to say, you know what, I'm going to give HTC a try. If you have all of these Galaxy phones and you can't stand that lag, my Note Edge is notorious for lagging, man. My Note Edge lags a lot. Now, I'm not talking about after you root it and throw a custom ROM and all that. I'm talking to your average consumers out there that don't know about rooting. Or maybe they scared the root because they worried about uh, getting, you know, worrying about the warranty of the phone and all that. I'm talking to y'all regular cats that like to buy the phone, leave it stock, go to the market, download a few apps, and just use the hell out of it all day long. No lag on the HTC M9. Okay, so that's a major, major win, a major plus. And, and you know, like I said, that might be your, 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 your tipping point to buying this phone. Next, last but not least, all right, because I've been going for a minute. Last but not least, the floss factor. All right, now let's talk about the floss factor. Y'all know what I mean by floss factor. That's the wow factor. That's when you're sitting down somewhere, you got your HTC M9, you chilling. Somebody comes on the scene and they got another heavy hitting phone, such as, you know, S6 or an iPhone, you know, iPhone 6 Plus. Maybe they got a Galaxy Note Edge. Maybe they got one of those. Maybe they just got an old school, not even old school. <laughs> Old school now, it's good. all these new phones is out. Note 4, all right? Do they got a big dog heavy hitter, Nexus 6? All right, do they got an iPhone 6, regular iPhone 6? Do they got a G3? Or do they got, you know, my personal favorite right now, the S6 Edge. All of these phones at the same bar, all right? You at a bar, you at a restaurant, everybody in there got all of these phones, and you come out on the scene with your HTC One M9. Are you sitting on top of the food chain or do you have to put the phone back in your pocket, wait for them to leave, and then come back out? And then you're the man again. Well, my answer to that, the floss factor on a scale of 1 to 10, all right, one being, one being pulling out a BlackBerry with the wheel on it, and 10 be, you know, pulling out a S6 Edge. All right, that's pretty much the, the top of the line phone right now. Even a Note Edge, that's pretty much the most flashiest phone you could get. We're not counting LG Curve, I mean uh, LG Flex 2. Not really feeling that one too much. That that ain't really nothing. All right, on a scale of one to ten, I'm gonna give the M9. I'm gonna give it a solid eight. Okay, you're not you're not gonna be shutting anybody down because everybody knows that once the lights get low, you you're not gonna be that dude taking pictures. So everybody already knows that. Yo, what's up, everybody? Right? <laughs> I was like, yo, what the? <laughs> All right, everybody already knows that that you're not gonna be the dude taking pictures. Everybody knows that you don't got a fingerprint scanner. Everybody knows that you don't got wireless charging. There's things that real tech heads automatically going to know when they see you with your M9 and they're going to pull out their phone. And, you know, fellas, that's what we do when we're sitting around at the bar and we're having drinks and something, and, you know, with your boys. You know, eventually it's going to be some phone wars when you pull out your phone and you start talking shit like, OK, look at me. I got this. Your boy's going to pull out this and you're going to have a little phone war, especially, you know, Apple. Especially all y'all cats with the iPhones. Somebody pulls out an iPhone, you want to shut them down. You want to be like, okay, your phone can't do this. I can do that with my phone. You want to have a battle and all that. HTC One M9, I give it an 8. It can hold its own weight, but it's just not the top of the line. Right? It's not the top of the food chain right now. And look, all right, look. We've been doing this HTC versus Samsung for a minute. All right, let's recap. Let's recap. Now, the video's over. This is just for all of my hardcore subscribers out there. This is kind of like a little uh, bonus vlog footage at the end. We had this conversation before. Yeah, I remember when it really started for me was the HTC Evo versus the original Samsung Galaxy. All right. Now, look, we've been going back and forth. And I always say this. You're only as good as your last product. Personally, I think the Evo, that was a game changer. That was the phone that put Android on the map. Android was out before that. I had Android on the, on another HTC phone before that. On the, I think it was the Hero. 
that was my first Android phone, but the Evo is the phone that put Android on the map and put HTC back up in the runnings. Then after that, we had the Evo 3D, okay, versus the Samsung. I think it was the um the S2 or whatever. Whatever. Yeah, I could go back and forth. But it really started heating up when it was the Evo 3D, I mean, uh, the Evo 4G LTE versus the Galaxy S3. Now, I gave that battle. I gave, an, uh, we'll skip the first two. I gave that battle to the uh, HTC the Evo 4G LTE. That I gave it to HTC. Hit me up in the comments and let me know who y'all think. Won the, I'm having a little brain freeze right now. I can remember the first two. But let's start from the Evo LGE, the, the Evo 4G LTE, and the Galaxy S3. I gave that battle to the HTC. Then after that, we had the Galaxy S4 and we had the HTC M7. Now, I gave that battle to the HTC M7 even though it was a close one, but my S4 had too much lag on it, too much problems. Then we came out with the M8 and the S5. I gave that battle to the S5. I right? Way more features, way more fun, way better camera. It is what it is. So now we got HTC M9 versus Samsung uh, Galaxy S6 or S6 Edge, however you want to call it. Let's go with just regular S6. Well, without even have, you know, I didn't even do the real review on this S6 yet. I'll do that after a full week. But just after using it for a few days, I'm going to have to give this round of HCC versus Samsung. I'm going to have to clearly give it to Samsung. All right. Now, when I do the real review, I'll tell you everything I like about this phone. But this phone is a certified beast right here. This, this is it right here. All right. Now, I actually had to, I had to take off two phones out of my lines right now. I had to take off two phones to add these two for a minute. So I actually had to retire my my Galaxy Note 4. I, now, not, it's not in full retirement, but I had to put them on the bench for a minute and let these two cats shine. And after using them for a while, I don't think they're going nowhere. All right, so you can expect to see these two in my rotation. The big boy, the Nexus 6, I can't leave without that. All right, that's in my rotation. Now, I got to keep HTC in my rotation, so it's going to be the M9. And we got room for one more, so I got my Galaxy Note Edge. All right, so this is my five-man rotation on Sprint. Now, on Verizon, on Verizon, I got two iPhones, and I got a uh, work BlackBerry. We're not going to talk about that. Got a work BlackBerry. So a lot of people have been asking me. Now, this is just for the true subscribers. Y'all know which two phones going to have to retire. I got to retire my G3. I'm actually going to sell this one. So anybody want to buy this one, make me an offer. I'll sell you the G3. I'll drop in all of the cases that I have with it. I right, make me an offer. Do not try to lowball me because I'm not a crackhead. All right, I'll just as soon keep it. But make me a decent offer. I'll, I'll throw in all the cases you could get this one. This one right here, I'm giving to my daughter. All right, she just lost her S5, so I'm going to give her this one. And um, look, that's another thing that's important about having a micro SD card. Because if you have kids and you give a kid a phone, they're going to blow up the memory on that phone the same day. They're going to go to Android Market, they're going to download every single game that's on the market, and they're going to take a thousand and one pictures a day, and they're going to come and they're going to say, Daddy, um, my phone don't have no more memory, what can I do? So my daughter been having that problem, all I do is I pop out an SD card and pop in another one. All right, so that's important, so that's why she's going to like this one. Whatever, it is what it is. Hit me up in the comments, let me know what's y'all what y'all favorite phone out right now. Let me know if I missed anything with this HTC. I tried to cover as much stuff as I can. It is what it is. All right. Live videos, no editing. So I do make mistakes. Now, if I made a mistake on anything and I catch it while I'm uploading the video, check the descriptions all right, in, the, in the description box. If I made a mistake with anything, I'll add it in the description. If y'all got any questions, any questions or comments y'all want to have, leave them in the comments section or come back when I'm doing a live Amazon Warrior video and I will talk about it live. And right, we'll have a little bit more fun when we're doing it live. All right. So now what I got coming up next week, well, not even next week, tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to start getting into um, all of these Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge cases. I got a thousand already. I know how I do. I got a thousand cases. So we'll get into those cases tomorrow. A lot of people ask me why I didn't do a camera test. And um, I didn't do a camera test because I've been pretty busy. Not to mention the weather. The weather been pretty sucky around here. So, I'm, you know, I like to do camera tests and nice weather and all that. Haven't had any nice weather. And I've been busy, so I didn't do a camera test. But 4K video on this. Talk about that real quick. Uh, it's, it's nothing. All right, it's nothing. It's nothing fancy. 4K video is not going to blow you away. I don't even recommend using it because it's going to eat up all the memory on your phone. So just use a regular 1080p video and it's going to look the same. All right, it's going to look the same. Now, be careful with the 4K video because depending on how much memory you have, 
if you now if you see something going down and you and you're the only person there recording it, yo, y'all seen that Walter Scott video? Imagine if the person who pulled out that phone try to record in 4K and they don't have enough memory and the phone just stops, the recording just stops. That's something you gotta be careful about with 4K video. It eats up a lot of memory. So just to be safe, if you're not sure, if you don't monitor your memory and all of that, just leave it on regular 1080p and record your videos. All right, that's my advice to y'all. Anyway, let's get out of here. Shout out to everybody that rock with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google+. Plus. Shout out to all the Google geeks as I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hitting me up on Voxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time, 100% full throttle. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with the Amazon Warriors Sundays. Y'all already know, Stream Ganks is on deck. Get your drinks ready, no meat zone. Now, one more thing I almost forgot. Fellas, ladies, say it with me. All y'all haters, all y'all trolls. Close your eyes and picture me rolling. It's your boy Floss, I'm out. Deuces.